So how do you, let's talk about tactics, right? Um, when you see the way I do this, I want to do big picture, then I want to do tactics. So you don't leave thinking it was a whole bunch of fluff. Sending daily report cards through at the start of each day. What does that do? When you set it up on Tradezilla, the way that we have it, and I can show you this, it's in some of my YouTube videos, the Tradezilla updates automatically to your trades. So if you share it to me in the morning, I can click on it at any point in the day and see if you've taken any trades. It refreshes as like every couple of hours imports trades. So to prevent tilt, here I am today, everybody. Yeah. Now hold me accountable to being good. Yeah. Win or loss, hold me accountable. Yeah. You hide the PL, you hide the daily report card, we know what you're probably doing. Yeah. You're, you're embarrassed of it too. Yeah. You're caught yeah. naked. Yeah. 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 Share with people that are <coughs> James and Amanda are really tapped in on their trading. Me and Riley, not as much. <laughs> Riley's taking care of the baby. But share it with people that are close to you so they are bought in on your success, right? Like the fact that you two trade together is the coolest thing. Because you're both. Together. All right, sorry, sorry, sorry. But separate, yeah. But the fact that you have. Each other. But the fact that you have each other to give feedback is the point. You know what I'm saying? And, and give each other some input. And again, a little bullet point. You have to fucking want it. Like Dan. Dan is great motivation, right? And even if you listen to the way Dan speaks, Dan. How many people did Dan quote when he's here for 20 minutes? Like five. Tony Robbins. Like he, he said, like five different people of quotes. So Dan has mentors, like I do, that are in books that you never meet, but then you also have the real life mentors. Charlie and Tiger, Tim Grover and Michael Jordan. Who thinks Michael Jordan's the best basketball player of all of all time? We can argue LeBron, whatever, but you get what I'm saying. How about Tiger? Is there really anybody that's as good as Tiger in our generation? Undeniable that he's the best golfer of our generation. Tiger has a coach. Tiger is Charlie's coach. Tim is Michael's coach. Michael is not Michael, and he has said that without that guy with the mustache. So you see Michael, you don't see the three coaches behind him pushing him, holding him accountable. Do you think in that video, Kobe was in the gym by himself for three hours before the game? There's like three staff members passing him the ball, getting the rebound, real game simulation, treating it like a game, right? Treating it like real life. How bad do you want it? Will you ask for accountability? No one's gonna come to you and be like, hey man, let me take care of you. But if you come to me and ask me, do you think I'm gonna say no? Right? Yeah. No one's made it alone. Nobody has made it alone. You hear about Caesar, you don't hear about the people who helped Caesar. You hear about Napoleon, you don't hear about his generals, right? Like it's just the truth in any <clears throat> So I said this earlier, the journey is the destination. I think that was my quote of the like I take notes every year when me and Riley do our goals for the year, like twenty twenty two, that was my quote of the year. Because when you really get it, and I think it clicked for me in twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two, that like there is no end goal. Especially in trading, it's a mind fuck because you can make unlimited income. Like, look at Dan, went from the poorest of the poor to now buying his mom a Porsche. Because he understands that this process has to be loved in order to be scaled. Follow that? You have to, like, the routine, you have to love that to be able to execute it well. You have to love the entire process of what we're talking about today in order to make it real. So, technically, what does that mean? Studying indicators, running back tests, loving it. Oh, there's this new anchor BWAP thing. We're all hot on it. We're learning from Brian Shannon. Like, and, like look at me, right? Because some of you have found me for trading and you're like, I just want to be like Austin. Well, look, I bring in Dan. I got these two guys. I got at Brian Shannon. I give credit to all these other people that are helping me still grow. So you see how it never stops and never at the top being like, yep, ASFX is the only way. Follow this. You're good. No, all this information is what comes together. Psychological, improving C-game and self-awareness, which we just talked about. Expanding your playbook. Thousands of markups. Be willing to be wrong. Say, that's cool. That's wrong. I know not to do that now. I got 50 losers. You don't think you can find patterns within those 50 losers and make it better? Financial capital, building a track record or getting funded. That's a process, right? That's part of this journey that we're on. And even in your knowledge, taking new courses, reading new books, working with new mentors. I never have ever said, ASFX is the only thing you'll ever need. You'll never need to do anything else. You have to do a lot. We're the technical, the foundation to make you profitable in terms of technical strategy. But the self-development work, in my opinion, it really never stops. Especially as like my entrepreneurial thing has been growing and like now with the podcast and the business outside of the trading, it's just, it's expanding. I'm learning that like you really are only capped by your decision to stop pushing yourself in every sense of that word, which I think is broken down well in these five categories. When you stop expanding in any one of these five categories, Pete. Okay. Best ideas of 2023. 
One of them that we need to just discuss briefly, and we're going to get into technical stuff in panel number two. We're almost finished panel two. <coughs> Building a track record. The why, as Tom put, attract investors, you're diversifying, it opens new doors, and no one can take it away. You show up with a five-year track record to any firm, like a verified track record, you don't think they're going to take you seriously? Do you know how many people can't do that? Like everybody, right? But then also, how many people can stay disciplined to build the track record over five years? Where? One account, your capital, a trusted platform or broker to RWNX, right? Yeah, anything. It's a, yeah, anything. Just your own platform. Your own, you can even you say any, trades up. Get, exactly. You can get any account verified. So your broker is a perfect start, personal account. What I wouldn't recommend is doing it on somebody like MFS or one of these yeah. funding companies that can just disappear overnight. Yeah. That's why when I show that track record of that spreadsheet, you guys know I'm not full of shit. But if I took a spreadsheet like that to a firm, they'd be like, Frank, yeah. fuck out of here. Well, then they're going to be like, who'd you trade this one? And I'm going to say, oh, my funded FX or whatever. They're going to be like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? I think something with the track record is like, everybody thinks you have to have like a track record with a 100K account. Like, put in $1,000 and treat that like right. dog tail. Yeah, trade it like you would for invent, like for building a track record. Put in $1,000 and build it as, a, as your track record. Because you're going to, like, I'll trade my personal capital different to how I would, tra would trade for an, if I was at a hedge fund or something right. like that. Right. Exactly. And then the how. Percent gain is not enough. You need these other stats. Risk, stability, drawdown. How long can you be consistent? Can you claw out of drawdown? Your value at risk. All, what's the other one? MARV or something. There's all these other stats that TradeZella gives you that you can really dive into that if you were to go to a fund, they'd say, how long are you in your wins? How long are you in your losses? At the very least. How are you managing those losses? How are you scaling out of those trades? Like They want all of those details. If you want to be a professional. And I know, again, a lot of this is like not fun. I can see it in some of your faces. You're like, this is kind of boring. Well, being a professional trainer is fucking boring. Correct. If, it's if you want an exciting job, go work at a circus. Oh, go yeah. down there. <laughs> Not even. Yeah. Go work, go, go. You want an exciting job? Climb mountains for a living. Be a ski bum. Do something else. This isn't that. This is really, really rich. Professional. Yeah. That's professional. My dad was an attorney. Not even the fun attorney, like in, in the in the courtroom, like he's guilty. Like that's the fun lawyer shit. That was my dad would just read documents, and and like he was the in-house general counsel, just reading financial statements, reading documents, making sure they're written correctly. So boring that I probably would jump out of a building. You know what I'm saying? That's the same. I understand now. That's the same as what we're trying to do here. But this just gives you a lot more freedom. He was beholden to all these other people telling him what to do. This I, I don't want to trade for a month. I don't have to. That's the freedom. So now, screenshot this. This is really, really important. Best Twitter accounts. We're not going to go through why each one because I'm going to be conscious of time. <laughs> Say it again. And now it's going to be Twitter. What are these for? This is X Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. That's going to be on the Yeah, you're going to have this as a download. You can get this. So this is called, you'll see in the section, this is panel one, this whole PowerPoint. The next section we're going into is panel two. This is more like the resource. I mentioned this book already, Brian's book. This one is one of my favorites, Exceptional Trading the Mind Game. Really easy to read. This is one of Tom's that he's working on, these SSRN papers. Tom's also working with open, high, low, closed data on TradingView, using that, putting it into Excel. I like Statista and Charlie Bellello's blog, which is like the charts of the week you see me do on uh, ASFX TV. Those resources make me, I think, more knowledgeable about what's going on in the world. I can understand macro conditions. When I first got into trading, you think I fucking knew what an NFP was, or a CPI, or what they meant? No. I didn't go to, I dropped out of college. I didn't have an economics degree. I don't know what any of that stuff is. But now eight years later, following it every year, reading and pushing myself, you start to learn. So those are the resources I would recommend. And then, of course, your trading journal. It's the most important resource. If you don't have that, literally nothing else we're talking about today even matters. If you don't journal your trades and try to make improvements based on every trade you take, especially for those of you that have not placed live trades yet, please, if you take anything from today, fuck strategies we're gonna talk about a lot. Journal every trade you take. Take every click of the button really seriously. I'm 100% guilty of being the guy. Four trades, three trades are on strategy, one trade's off strategy, I only journal the three, I leave the other one. And it cost me so much time. Nobody wants to journal their losses. It's ugly. But then when you start to realize I need to be a good loser and embrace this ugly to get rid of it, now you're being a professional. Embrace your own flaws, stop thinking you're fucking perfect like Lee. <laughs> And move forward. Go ahead, Tom. Tom's best ideas of the year. 
Yeah, so for me, I just this was just a recap, really, of what I think has been the big takeaways. I think work ethic, which we spoke about a bit ago, rather well, boring. The work that you are putting in isn't exciting. You're sitting there doing things that lead to dead ends for me a lot of the time. And nobody's even seen you do it. No. Ready. So yeah, I could probably do 20 back tests and they'll all turn out to be shit, but one of them might work. Um, so yeah, hard work. That's, I think, the biggest one. I'm reading a book at the minute called Bounce by Matthew Saeed. And basically it's talking about how there's no such thing as talent. All of these people that you see, like child prodigies, tiger, etc., etc., the first dogs that see, they've been working their asses off for 10 years since they were five years old. They're not a child prodigy overnight. That talent has come through practice, which is what the next one, maximizing feedback. If you want to get better, quicker, the best thing to do is get their repetition and maximize the feedback. If you're taking a thousand shots or a thousand trades, and you're going in and looking into them and journaling them and you're looking back through it, you're maximizing feedback. Mentors, you're asking for feedback on all of your trade. The people that ask the most questions in ASFX, in the Black Shirt Club, in VIP, the ones that ask the most questions are the ones that improve the most. We see it time and time and time There are people again. in this room that don't ask enough questions in the Black Shirt Club sometimes, and they saw people excel faster than them in the Black Shirt Club because those other people were talking more. That's it. Just speak. Speak your mind. You know why they don't? Come on. Ego. Huh? Ego. Yeah, they don't want to be wrong. They don't want to ask me a question and be like, I can't believe I asked Austin that. And he told me I was yeah. wrong and I, was, I looked so stupid. It comes back to that, whatever that phobia was that you said earlier. Allodoxophobia. Because you're scared you're of somebody judging you right. when you ask a sip lot of question. Right. And around about five people in the room have the same damn question. Exactly. You're damn right. Yeah. Or they did and they now want to help you because they know what it's like to be in that confused place. Yes. Yeah. Environment, this is a massive one again for me, uh, just understanding what the market is doing. And I think this is honest for me, a big reason why it takes a long, a longer time to learn because the market is completely different this year than it was in 2022 or 2020 in COVID. So you almost have to go through that environment to understand that certain strategies are going to work way better than others. And you have to go through that to, to get it. So I think for me this year, it's been a big one, environment, and then understanding which strategy to deploy in which environment. So last year was very trendy, then you've got like the mean reversion stuff, and then like you work two or three months at a time, they will work better, so it's identifying the environment. But it takes time, it does. Protection, I think this is a big one for all of us um, this year, with what's gone on for MFF, uh, Austin Dad, etc. that these life events aren't going anywhere. And if we want to be in here for the next 20, 30 years, we're going to have to be able, be able to overcome certain life events and understanding how to deal with them. Because we've got a great example, Austin, two and a half months didn't trade. We had this, a guy in the BSC, same sort of thing, had a bereavement, went till, literally took twice, twice in two weeks. Two weeks. A Thursday and then the following Friday, it just wouldn't stop. Yeah. And I'm sitting there in this, like it's like I'm looking at a mirror and he won't listen to me because you've got to touch the stove. It's just the truth. And then the final one, I'll never forget this, is when we, I was in the, B, in the BSC and I was having a coaching call with you guys, and you said, set a lid. Take your coat off. Yeah, That's set a lid. And it's like, once you've got to that position where you're like, your routine's set in, like, get rid of the excitement. It's not yeah. exciting, I'm sorry guys, it's really not. It's not. It's not. It's just about going in and rinsing and repeating and repeating and repeating, that's what it is. This one too, like, the take your coat off, like, make yourself comfortable. Yeah. Get comfortable with being wrong. Get comfortable with getting feedback. Get comfortable in this environment that is not going to be straight up. So, <coughs> car your equity curve. Bruce. Um, yeah, so obviously the first one, just uh, it's never a straight line, right? So, yeah, I mean, there's gonna be times where you're gonna make money, there's gonna be times where you're gonna sit and draw down, but you, you just gotta take, take what, what happens. You know, I think there's, some, someone told me the other day that there's going to be probably five big things that happen in your life. Like you get married, you have children, or whatever. There's, there's a lot of like consistent actions each and every single day. You're not going to have these big events every month. Like this is not going to happen, right? So just, yeah, as Tom, that's actually a great word, like settle in. Um, but yeah, learning to, as I said, learning to embrace the ups and the downs. Um, and then just having, yeah, having supporters around yourself. For me, uh, Amanda, I've been very blessed in my life. She's supported me from day one. My dad. A true definition of your better half. Exactly. You know, she's um, yeah, she's been through uh, there through the ups and the downs. Trust me, like there's there's gonna be times where you want to cry, like 
it, it gets it, it gets shit at times. It's not losing money while you're trying to work hard is, is not is not easy. But um, you got to have people in your life that actually support you and and believe in you wholeheartedly. And you got to obviously believe in yourself. But I think once someone sees the vision and how much time and dedication you put into it, they actually see that like you mean business. You got to sell them on. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, and then once you start to have a little bit of success, I think just being um, being humble. I think for me, uh, what I've learned is like when you start to make money, it, and especially in trading, and you start to get a big ego, you can quickly humble you very, very quickly. Um, so just yeah, being anything can happen, um, and yeah, just, just take care of yourself. Um, but yeah, here's another one: just doing the basics very well. So this is something I haven't done well in the last three months. I've been trying to, you know, trading is like you doing. Trading your best setups, whether they win or lose, and stop doing dumb shit in between. So doing the basics well, journaling, do, just taking trading your best trading setup uh, the best you can, but doing the basics really, really well. You don't have to be the smartest person in the room. I've never been the smartest person in the room, even though I've got a degree here. But um, you never, never. Uh, I'm never going to be the smartest, but I know that I'll, what I do and what I put in, I'll, I'll, I'll work. I won't beat you over maybe two or three years, maybe even five years, but I'll beat you over ten years because I'll be here when I'm 40, 50, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and then this is a big one. Having a written trading plan, obviously we spoke about this earlier. But we have, gave it to you. You just yeah. have to fucking fill it out. Exactly. Read it every day. Yeah. And then ask somebody to say, hey, can you give me feedback on this? you think this plan is solid? Exactly. Don't ask a brand new person. Ask James. Ask me. You think I'm going to ignore any of you in a DM or an email? Yeah. yeah. Are you going to email me, though? How many of you are going to ask me for feedback on your plan when it's done? Three of you? I would hope all of you. But just be realistic. Yeah. Okay. Last one. So I said this before, and it's going to stem into what we talk about next. Price pays. Indicators are not going to make you successful. Unfortunately, I wish there was an indicator that would just make you all money and make my job a lot easier. <laughs> True. Hours that you put in, they go towards mastery. Again, not rocket science, right? If you do 50 push-ups and I do 500, who's going to look better? The time frame of entry does not determine your profitability. That was a big misconception I feel like I had coming into this year. Oh, this strategy only works on the 15 minute time frame. No. Time frame is a way of reading price. Candles are an indication of what price is doing. Candles are an indicator. Right? Follow that? So how you make money is not determined based on the time frame of your entry. How quickly you have to decide about your trade comes down to the time frame of your entry. One minute traders have to decide quicker if they want to stay in or get out then one hour traders. And same thing to a, a person on the daily time frame or an investor on the weekly time frame, right? I think, um, like we talked about, one of my things that makes me a decent trader is my self-awareness. I'm not afraid to stay flat. I don't feel FOMO about missing wins because I'm making money from other ways. That's just the truth. I'd be lying to you if I said something else. Having money come in through other things allows me to sit there and say, I don't think this is me at my best. I'm not gonna take the loss because if I miss this win, that won't piss me off as much as if I take this trade and I lose. That's a really great question that probably could be on here. Best ideas of the year. The question of, will you be more upset at yourself if you take this trade and lose, or if you don't take it and it's a winner? If you're going to be more pissed that you would take the trade and lose, won't take the trade. But if you're going to be more pissed because it fits your system, you know it's in your strategy, you're going to be more pissed at the, win, the missed win, that's a trade i got to do. That's like the last question I'm going to ask myself before I take a trade. And then thinking terms in month, you know, we talked about this, just monthly instead of daily. I think that's, and again, when I'm not focused, I don't trade. 